Well, hello, shiny, crafty people. Tim Totten here, and welcome back to the channel. Um, today's going to be a little weird video because I had recorded an entire intro in my workshop, and unfortunately, that file just went somewhere. So this is what we're going to look at today. You got extra ties laying around? Why not make an apron? All right, now that you've seen what we're going to be doing, let's delve into going to the cutting board, and I'll show you how to make that amazing um, apron out of old ties. All right, so I have a pile of ties. And what the interesting thing about these ties are that, you know, they're wider, much wider at the bottom than they are all the way at the top. In fact, they all sort of have a similar shape as they go. And the value of this is that when I um, put a, when I make this into either a skirt, which you could do, like make a, skirt that flares out, or I'm making a, an apron, the bottom of the apron needs to be bigger than the, than the top is anyway. So this is really gonna help out and I can leave these bottom edges. So you'll see here, I've already started sort of putting them together. And what I've been doing is sort of thinking, how would I put these together in terms of their particular look? Now you could do a lot. There's a lot of things you could do. You could come in here if you wanted to be super, like if I was doing this for a high-end client and not for a quick project, I might come in and open every tie up in the back and then be able to actually use the folds that are already here to sew them together. And, and I will show you what that looks like in, in one example, because it does look really nice. But honestly, then you have to put it all back together. And do you want a backing on the thing? And I, I just want to make a rather quick project here and make something cool that will be a nice showpiece but is it necessarily gonna be something that I use all the time? If I was making a product or a jacket or maybe like a, like a vest, I might wanna do that because I wouldn't want to see the stitching lines that are gonna be on it. But in fact, for this one, I'm gonna let the stitching be sort of part of it. But I'm gonna design how far I want this to be. Now I've measured that I really want my, my apron to be at least um, 32 inches, and that's just for me to go around me um, at the bottom, at the very least. And right now I've got about 21 inches in this design. And in the top, I don't want it to be super wide. In fact, I don't want the top to be more than a foot wide. Right now near the top is about eight inches. So I should be able to add a couple more ties here. Now, I'm sort of, look, I'm, you'll see I'm sort of stacking them one to the top of the other. So in fact, this is sort of, this one is over top of the two next to it. And this one is below the two on either side of it. And as I get toward the top and they just go side by side, um, I'm trying not to overlap them too, too much at the top. So I'm gonna find a couple other colors. I've already got, you know, blue and browns and those things in here. So I might wanna throw in a different design <clears throat> looking at these different ties. And, and maybe this needs something a little more colorful here. So I might use this one um, and put that one in the mix. And then, you know, do I want to put one, another one on this side? I kind of like, uh, this one's got some cool look and there's not a lot of red over here, but is it too similar with this particular design at the bottom? Maybe that is, and so I might not put that one in. I might wanna go more for this sort of design. So I'm gonna go on this side and put that one on here. And that goes underneath because the other one went above. And then what I'm gonna do is take them individually back over to the sewing machine and start sewing them together. So I'm gonna get at least uh, a couple more on here, get that part done, and then I will take, go over to the sewing machine with this. So I started stitching a couple of these together and you're gonna be interested in what I found. I found that without any sort of base underneath it, they stretch like crazy. This is, these are all silk ties and they're going to do that. So I've decided instead to actually use some stabilizer to, um, to stabilize these. So what I'm gonna do is lay them out first in a the pattern that I want upside down, and then I will be able to put them, you know, put a stabilizer in the back and go from there. So what I'm gonna do is lay out this guy straight like this, as straight as I can get this to go, the next one with it, and I'm gonna put the next one sort of on top of it. I'm gonna make sure I line them together in the way that I want. There we go. Actually, I think I'll just keep doing them like this. I'm gonna sort of shingle them rather than try to tile them one on top of the other like I've done with it angled out. The next one, I'll put the same sort of direction like that, recognizing that these are all going to 
continue to connect here at the top in a different way. They have to sort of shape themselves. Again, this one is going to come. Make sure I have a little bit of overlap among all of that as it goes. And in fact, what I think I found is that I really need to be careful about how wide this is gonna go um, because I, I'm gonna need to put others along the edge. Same thing here, making sure it overlaps. I sort of need to know where my center ones are. Where's the center gonna be? Because that's gonna help me figure out, see how they keep sort of shifting away from each other as, it, as I build just to one side. I kind of need to build on both sides. Let me grab another one to build over here with. So I'll put this one over here. <coughs> Again, come underneath like I had done before. I love learning things like this. I don't work with ties very often, so this is a new, newer project for me, and I think I'm gonna be able to sort of like learning. I just love the idea that, you know, you learn as you go along and realize, oh man, that didn't work. So I've been adding on both sides again. So we'll do the same thing on this side, adding this red one over here again, overlapping by about not quite a quarter of an inch on the side just following the line as it goes up. It's very crucial though that you overlap at the right amount here because once I put the stabilizer on it, they're gonna stay in this position. So you gotta make sure you have enough overlap all along because when I turn around and stitch from the top, it's all gotta work. Okay, continue. And if there's a little more overlap, that's fine, especially if we don't want this top and bottom to get so far away from each other. Still, I feel a little like I need to have a little more on this end. Let me find one that'll look good over here. I think this one would look good. See, this kind of look would be look good over here. The only problem is I'm running out of my ironing board, so I'll have to be real careful. I don't want to push everything over already that I've done. Ooh, yeah, I'm going to have to. Well, I will, I'm gonna go ahead and iron the rest of this on first, uh, add my last one on this side, and then I'll add two more on this side and I'll show you what I came up with. All right, so I'm adding this first and I'm gonna go ahead and this is my material that I created. It's as long as I want my piece to be. It's gonna be a little wider, however. So I am gonna put it here um, and just try to get as many of these connected into it as possible uh, without going over. And I want this to be in sort of the center. So if we do that, <coughs> I am not gonna worry about how beautiful it is. This will be the back of the item anyway, so it's not gonna be seen. And I'm not gonna do all the way down to the edges there. I've got my iron already pulled together and it's hot, so I'll just go ahead and start getting us, I'm not gonna overdo it because remember this is silk, so I'm not trying to, and I don't have any steam for this. You just read the directions on whatever particular um, uh, stabilizer you're using. You'll notice I wanted a little wider stabilizer than I had, so I just stitched it together. That made it a lot easier to do. And uh, I'm really just using this to get the pieces to stick together. I am gonna add another one over here, so I'm not too worried about going too close to the edge. I can see through the stabilizer to where I'm ironing to make sure everything is, you know, holding together okay. And I'm gonna not try to go all the way down to the bottom over on this side. All right, let's keep going there. I'm gonna get a pair of scissors and just trim off. See, over here, I don't necessarily want to, to, to hit too close to the ends. So I'll just go in and chop that off. And the same thing goes, I'm gonna look here and make sure this one has stayed properly on. It has, just check every bit of it.
and I'm looking through the stabilizer to see the actual material of the tie so that I don't go over the tie um, and because I want to cut it off near the edge of this particular tie. Since this one's going to be the last one on this side, I'm going to come back in and just trim the stabilizer back a good quarter of an inch from the edge of the tie because it only needs to really, it's only got to hook in the, um, the part where the tie overlaps the other tie. So you'll see there, that's taken that off of there. And now I can really press all the way out to the edge. I have this at pretty high heat, actually. I don't know why I'm touching it. You can't tell from, <laughs> from me touching it if it's hot. Other than if I yelled, ouch, it's hot. Um, I'm using pretty high heat because I want to make sure this really does go through here. But I'm not leaving the iron on any one particular place for a super long period of time. I'm following the instructions. All right, I'm going to finish doing this, and then I will share with you um, how to add the other piece on that I need the, the rest since I didn't have a big enough ironing board and you might not have a big enough one at home. And then I will show you how to sew these together. So because I finally have these ironed together, I can move it backwards. I moved it over and now I can add in my other two ties that I'm going to use. So I've got this one, nice and pretty one. And remember we're doing, um, where the overlap goes from the one above. So I'm gonna overlap that. This tie is kind of fun. It's got like a line and I can sort of see where I need to put the overlap to make sure that I get enough area for the stitching to go through. This one gets very skinny at the top. Wow, that's crazy. And then I'll add in at least one more. Now I am saving a couple of ties to make the part that goes around your neck and the part that goes around your back. So the straps, so to speak. All right, those are all finished. So now I can come in and continue my ironing. And I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this as well because I don't want this to be a full Now, if I wanted to make sure all of this was covered down below, I could cut a piece from here and add it. I may do that, actually. I just want to show you. Um, it would have been more attractive if I had a piece that actually fit. But this is what we've got. And again, I'm not going to iron all the way to the edge when I do this. So when I do it, I won't edge uh, iron all the way to this edge. And in fact, this particular tie has a really great two-tone and I can really see where that needs to be ironed too. So I can actually be super careful. I am actually using a little steam. I read the instructions. It turns out you can use some steam on this particular material. So I'm gonna use a little bit and then I'm gonna come back through here while I have a moment before it really gets set down and I haven't gone all the way to the edge, and trim that off. Now this one would look really cute actually um, if, if you put a, a lining material on the inside of it to really step it up. And of course the shape of this is gonna look much better on a lady than on me, but I'm the body that I've got to show you. So once I finish it, I will be modeling this, but I'm not gonna be making a huge effort <coughs> to be the something I wear. I'm gonna actually give this to a friend of mine. Now what we wanna do next is stitch 
all of the pieces together. And we're gonna do that on the opposite side. So in fact, as I lift this and show you, here's now what it looks like. And I'm gonna come in and stitch on the other side, put all of this together. <laughs> Now I've chosen to use black thread to stitch this together, but you certainly could use other, another type of thread. I've also decided that on the very top end, these two that are the two ends are gonna be what I tie it together with. So I'm gonna make sure I don't over stitch these past that line. Um, and so that they don't stitch to here because these are gonna have to all fold back. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and start stitching along the line here and just stitch all the way up and keep doing that on all of them until they're all hooked together. Now I flipped it over so I can make sure that when I can see through, and you may not be able to see through on camera, but I can see through this backing material and see <coughs> that it has caught this tie all the way along there. All right, to the next one. I want you to notice something. I'm actually stitching right up to the edge of the top tie because I want to make sure I have enough room for it to go through the other tie. But also, I'm doing that to give it a uniform look along the entire stitched piece so that it doesn't so that it looks like it was made, you know, with a machine, which it is, but also that it was made with precision. I want those vertical stitches to just kind of disappear as people are looking at it and they won't really recognize that they aren't typical to ties. Now we're getting to the point where the ties no longer uh, are supported by the, the batting underneath, or the, uh, sorry, the stabilizer, but I do want to, go far enough along that I can have a single piece to flip over. So I've done that there. I'm gonna back stitch and then now I can go back and keep stitching. good example I actually started it and it didn't catch the one below so I've really got to make sure that's especially important where I didn't start the the actual interfacing until further in <clears throat> So that's the last of those along the top. 
And that gets us finished with uh, this main body portion. I've left those two tails uh, open so that they're gonna be able to tie together to be the neck one. And then now my next step is to flip these over and figure out how far I want to fold them down. So let's go to the cutting table. So here's the end of this. I have my two tails there coming out. And these are all the pieces that I did continue stitching them down so they would be easier to do. And what I think I'm gonna do is just kind of come in here and decide how far I would fold these over. And I think I wanna use a pretty generous, almost like a two inch piece on the end of that. So I will use my cutter and cut across there, cut two inches across there. These come back to these are somewhat sewn together. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna fold them over, but I'll fold them over first to get a nice edge. So almost a full inch, and I will definitely be using some pins or clamps here to hold this down, because I really wanna have this beautifully stitched uh, in place. So I'm gonna actually stitch, oh, put the pin in this way. I'll probably pin each individual one because they're kind of thick with all of that piece there. I think it'll give a nice top edge though to this, um, to the, I don't know why that one didn't finish stitching, but it's nice because it didn't have to fold the whole thing down. Fold those down as well, halfway. And remember all of the ties also have, they also have stabilizer inside of them. There's a piece inside each tie to give it its rigidity. So get all those pinned down. And because this will be the back and no one will see it, I will probably come through and give a couple of stitches across just to make sure it really holds in place. And then we'll do one final pretty stitch. So let's take this to the sewing machine. So my first stitch is gonna be along the bottom edge, making sure I don't capture this uh, tail in there. And I'm not gonna be as concerned with how necessarily straight it is. Just wanna make sure it's holding everything in place. This one's supposed to be underneath that one. I didn't take that pin out in advance. Now, because this particular one overlaps the other one, you just have to be real careful to how you handle this last little bit. And I'm just gonna be a little extra careful about folding it in, but also not sewing over this particular piece. So now that that's all done, I can then flip and fold all of this a little better Actually, I think I'll stitch right along the top here just to get it a stitch line where it all holds together first. Again, this will all be on the back, so it's not going to be as visible. Then I'm going to fold the entire thing down. Yes, look how good that looks. And I'm gonna choose a line on my sewing machine to use as my guide rather than the edge of this material. That way on the front, it looks nice and even. And it doesn't matter what it looks like on the back. I'm tucking this end underneath because I don't wanna go too far over the other piece. And then, on the front, it just gets a simple line there along the front. A little extra stuff here that I'll chop off with a pair of scissors. So the last thing we have to decide is where are we putting the, let me back you up a little bit so you'll see it, is where are we putting the ties for the back and what material are we using? And I kept the tie for this purpose. 
I think this tie is particularly nice for that. It's got a good weight to it. It's not too thick, so it's gonna be easier to use as a tie. And then what we just have to do is sort of cut it in half and figure out how to mount it. So I like the idea of having a decently long uh, ties to use for it. And I'm gonna put it pretty high up on this because if a lady wears this, then her waist is really a little higher up necessarily. So I'm gonna do that in just a moment. Let me go ahead and cut this thing in half. And I'm literally just gonna chop it in half there. Now, when I put this onto the machine on, I can either sew it and then fold this in, or I could fold all of these pieces in if I wanted to, or I could fold a tab of material over here and then sew that on. I think what I'm gonna do is flip, flip it over, choose where I'm gonna put this, the tie by, I'm gonna come down about um, <clears throat> nine and a half inches or so. Actually, let's just put it at eight and a half and we'll start the thing at eight and a half. So one goes here and one goes on the other side. But if I do it this way, if I sew it here and then flip it over, that will get exactly what I need to do. So I will put this here like that. Give it a pin, pin it on. Now you could go at an angle, but then that might distort this. So I'm actually gonna go kind of split the middle in between an angle and not an angle. Okay, there's that one. And then the other one, same thing on the other side. And again, you'll see, I'm gonna fold them out, which is why I've got it at this, um, why, they're, why they're facing inside right now, which might seem weird because they need to go out eventually. Actually, um, I need to do it the other way because I want them, I want this pretty side facing out. So I need to do it like this. In other words, when it, the tie is open, I want to, the pretty side facing out. All right, let's go stitch them. So I'm gonna first tack down the bottom edge and I'm going to fold in the, the bits like that so that it's smaller. Once it goes on, I don't want any of that tucking out. Now I have to decide where I'm going to stitch across and I'm gonna go at about one inch in that way. And then I can flip out and stitch again. And I'm gonna stitch a square right around this. Following up the side with the what the uh, line of the tie is, the outside tie. And that has now stitched that on as a square. And on the other side, you really can't even see it. I'll trim a couple of those pieces though. Now this might be a good argument for choosing a dark color tie for the edges. This one's not dark at all, so it's really gonna be able to see that square quite a bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna come out a little bit with my piece, even though I had stitched it on differently. I really wanna make sure I get close to the edge. Come in that inch that I talked about. Fold it out and stitch my square. Now you could do an X shape with this or a square, that's really up to you. But once I finish this square, basically my tie, uh, my, my beautiful tie apron is done. 
And then I'll model it for you, which is going to look funny because I'm not the right shape for this. But I'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. All right. I am wearing the tie apron. I'll back up so you can get a look at it. See this great tie apron? Oh my goodness. Uh, I did a couple things. You'll notice in the back that I have the tie here that you can tie however you want. Right? But did you notice I also, let me get closer so you can see it. I also tied this in a Windsor knot so you can make it tall, shorter. If you want to make it shorter, you just pull the knot like you're tying a tie and it gets shorter. Or you pull it out and this part gets longer. I gotta tell you, I think this looks so amazing. In fact, uh, I think actually the backing helped a lot to get this a little bit better in terms of the, the shape of it. I don't think you notice it at all. Um, you could add a pocket to this on top, but I don't think you need to. I actually think it would be kind of pointless. Um, I will say one of the only things I might do is that you might wanna add more than one a tie to each end so that this gets a long enough to do a bow in the back, because right now it's really not, it's gonna be really hard to do a bow with this. And um, maybe you'd use more like the, maybe just use the, the tail ends of the tie rather than the thicker part. So I might actually take off the thicker one of these and add a different tie on. And it actually would be kind of cool to have a different tie hanging off it. But that is a tie apron. You can see why this would be really cute as a skirt. You could do a skirt all the way around. That's my tie apron. I hope you've enjoyed this project. I certainly enjoy bringing it to you. And uh, until next time, stay crafty. All right. Gosh, now I'm all tied up. <laughs>